So you want to move to Australia on a working holiday visa? Well, you have clicked on the right video. My name is Dane Luca and I live in Sydney, Australia. I don't know if you can see that. That is the Sydney Opera House. I am lucky enough to live in one of the coolest cities in the world right now. And in this video, I'm going to give you some top tips on what to do to move to Australia on a working holiday visa. I just realized when I said that, you definitely could not see the Sydney Opera House. So here's the Sydney Opera House. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you on Things I wish I knew before I moved to Australia on a working holiday visa. My name is Dane Luca. I moved to Australia at the end of March 2022. To give you a bit of background on who I am, my name is Dane. I left England in July 2021. I ended up traveling Eastern Europe, the Middle East. I ended up living in Mexico for a few months before applying for a working holiday visa in Australia. This is something that I've always wanted to do. I did the famous East Coast trip in 2020 and then obviously COVID happened so things got a bit complicated but I moved to Australia within like two weeks so I was very unprepared. I generally, I tend to travel very sporadically, very spontaneously, and that is how I've ended up in Sydney, Australia. So what is a working holiday visa in Australia? So for a lot of countries around the world, and I will be speaking from personal experience, I'm a British person, so there's a few things that I'll be talking about if you are from England. In general, the working holiday visa allows you to live and work in Australia for up to one year. Generally, it applies to people of ages 18 to 30. There there are a few exemptions from this, one of the countries being Ireland and soon England where people can stay in Australia up to the age of 35. Now you can get up to three years, you can do a second and third year if you do specified work such as what's well, generally known as farm work, regional work, there's been a lot of changes around that, I won't go into that, but you can do um, like hospitality work in Northern Queensland, things like that, that totally counts now. If you do 88 days in your first year, then you can apply for a second year visa. If you do, I think it's six months in your second year, then you can apply for a third year to stay in Australia, even longer. Now the cost of this visa is $500 and the process and times do vary. I applied back in December 2021 and so many of my friends applied the same time as me. They got approved straight away. My visa actually took three months to get approved. I have no idea why that happened. So at the time I applied for my visa was back in December 2021. I was living in Mexico at the time, so just a little, um, just a little insert there, you can actually apply for this visa if you're not living in your home country. I know so many people that got their visas approved instantly. One word of advice is do not book your flight until you have the visa. I'm part of a few different Facebook groups and some people have literally been waiting like over a year for their visa to be approved. I think there was a big backlog of visas. Hopefully they have started getting rid of those. One thing that's been really confusing as a British person, so part of Brexit is that the UK made a trade deal agreement with Australia that British people can go and live in Australia for up to three years without doing farm work, regional work, specified work. That actually hasn't come into place yet. I came to Australia under the assumption that I had three years. I only have one year if I want to extend that. I still have to do the specified or regional work. The UK and Australian government made that agreement back in December 2021 and they said it will come into force within the next two years. So that means by December 2023, hopefully British people coming to Australia don't have to do specified regional work. That is really good news. So once you have your visa, you're then gonna need to book a flight. I would strongly recommend booking flight insurance with this. I paid an extra $100, which I don't normally do. I generally always book my flights through Skyscanner. I will look at the flight I want on Skyscanner and then I will go book it on mytrip.com. I've literally booked 20 flights in the last year. It always gives me the best price and I think it's reliable. The other thing that I would suggest doing is booking it directly with the airline just because you have more protection and always book your flight on a credit card just in case anything does happen. Generally, I don't book flight insurance, which is an add-on that so many flight companies and websites try and sell to you. Generally, I don't book the flight insurance, but because this was an expensive flight, I flew from San Francisco because I was traveling through California at the time. I think I paid about 400 pounds to fly from San Francisco to Sydney and I paid an extra 100 US dollars I paid in dollars because that's where I was at the time. Um, I paid an extra 100 US dollars to get a flexible flight, I think it's called. 
paying that little bit extra means I had a lot more protection. I could have literally changed that flight to anywhere in the world, any date for free because I paid that extra $100. Now I typically don't do that, but because it is such a big flight and I know a lot of my viewers are British. So if you are coming from England, definitely pay a little bit extra just because so many different things can happen and it's a big old flight. It's a lot of money. It's not your 10 pound flight to Rome. So I would definitely book with a bit of insurance. I actually do not usually do these type of sit down videos. So this is very weird for me. Most people typically start their Aussie journey in places like Perth, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. I flew straight into Sydney. Now I've done the East Coast before, so I've not starting my east coast trip but when i flew in previously i went to cairns and then i worked my way down the east coast to melbourne um so you will want to pick the city that you're going to start in. are you going to fly into sydney going to fly into brisbane where are you going to fly into you want to pick that then you're going to want to book accommodation now i strongly recommend if you are coming to sydney please stay in wake up sydney central i think it's such a good hostel it's clean it's social there's people of all ages i think people i found as a 28 year old british guy i found a lot of people that come to Australia are like 18 to 22. That's absolutely fine. But I've traveled to over 40 countries and I feel that Australia has a really younger demographic of people that are traveling. But just to reassure you, if you are like towards, towards, towards the age of 30, such as myself, there are a lot of people traveling. So yeah, don't let that put you off. Another thing you want to consider is, are you gonna bring a suitcase or are you gonna bring a backpack? Now, I have traveled with both. I've done three trips with a backpack. I've done plenty of trips with a suitcase. If you are just coming to Australia, I do not see the need for a suitcase. And I'm gonna tell you why. Most of the time, you're literally going from bus to taxi to your hostel. You're not carrying your suitcase over like, crazy lakes or like mountains or anything like that. If you're going to places like Asia, Central, South America, maybe you might want to consider having a backpack. But if you're a suitcase person, personally, I miss my suitcase a lot. I came from like Latin America, so I was using a backpack and I miss it so much. I'm not actively traveling at the moment, but I generally prefer traveling with a suitcase. You know, there is all sidewalks and pavements here, so you can like wheel your suitcase along. I remember when I came to Australia as a tourist, for six weeks back in 2020, I was literally carrying my backpack in like 40 degree heat. It was not pleasant. So my personal preference is suitcase. It is a first world country. There is no need to be lugging these big old bags around. Unless that's your choice, then you live your best life. Okay, so the basics. These are things that I really wish I knew before I came here. There are so many little things to do. Like, so I literally knew I was coming to Australia like on like a, I think the end of February, beginning of March. And then I flew two weeks later. That gave me no time to plan, no time to look into things. I literally landed in Australia and then had to basically sort out my new life. So first things first, you're gonna wanna set up a bank account. Biggest tip ever, just go with Commonwealth Bank. Pretty much everyone uses it. And a great thing about Commonwealth Bank is you can actually apply for a bank account before you even land. And then when you land, you can go and pick up a bank card from the freaking place. The other thing I would say is get your new bank card delivered to the hostel that you are gonna start in. So funny thing about Australia is post can take ages. So when I moved to Australia, I ordered my bank card to the hostel that I was staying at for the first week. It didn't come and then I went in there after two weeks and I said, look, my bank card still hasn't arrived. So it ended up taking like three weeks for my bank card to arrive, which was really annoying. So one thing I wish I knew is order your bank card before you arrive. You can totally do that and go with Commonwealth Bank because I think they're just the best. Next thing, if you're going to want to start work or you know you're going to start working in Australia at some point, apply for your tax file number, your TFN. As soon as you arrive, you apply online. It takes five minutes and it's a code like your sort of national insurance number back in England. And you need that code to start employment. If you're gonna start work straight away and you don't have your TFN in the post, they send it out to you, which is kind of annoying, but that's just the way it works. I actually called up after a few days because I was starting work like my second week in Australia and my employer needed to know my TFN, little tip, you can call the tax people and just be like, yo, I start work, I need to know my TFN. They can tell you the number over the phone and then you just give that to your employer. Okay, next thing, SIM card. It's just a lot easier to get a SIM card in the country that you're living. I unfortunately am still paying my UK SIM card. I'm gonna cancel that soon. Best coverage in Australia is Telstra. However, they are very expensive. I think 
the cheapest monthly sim is like 60 70 dollars which is quite a lot personally i went into vodafone on my first day i went into vodafone i pay 40 dollars a month i have 80 gigabytes and unlimited everything i don't need 80 gigabytes but that's just like the lowest gigabytes they do i have pretty good service i will say it's not as good as telstra my partner he's with telstra he's had coverage everywhere it's a bit spotty with vodafone but it does the job and probably the most important thing although a lot of countries have reciprocal agreements with australia and you can come here and get what medicare which is it's like public health insurance it doesn't cover everything so i would always recommend to continue getting health insurance i've been paying my nomad travel health insurance for the past year I highly recommend them. I'll leave them a link down below. I use Safety Wing and I pay about 40, 42 USD a month. That's travel insurance. So if I lose my things, if I need to go to the hospital, because Australia can get expensive, especially for things like healthcare. And I'm going to tell you why. I've met so many backpackers that do not have health insurance because they are relying on Medicare. That is absolutely fine. But Medicare for people that are not national residents of Australia. It costs a lot of money, for instance. So in the state, New South Wales, where Sydney is, where I'm living at the moment, the call out price for an ambulance is $813. That means if you have an accident and you need to go into hospital in an ambulance, you're gonna be getting a bill for at least $800 minimum for the cost of the ambulance, plus whatever treatment you need. Um, obviously, I would recommend getting Medicare when you arrive, if you can have it, you might as well have it. I personally haven't even signed up yet just because I have my health insurance and I pay that monthly if I need to go to the doctor or whatever, I will use it. I was literally gonna cancel my health insurance and then I realized, oh my God, um, if I need to go in an ambulance or if anything happens, I'm still gonna be paying towards the cost of healthcare. And I don't wanna do that. The other thing that you are gonna to wanna to know about is superannuation. These things are kind of incredibly boring to me. They're like admin life tasks, but they are so important. So before I started work, my employer literally said, I need to know what super you're with. I didn't know what that meant. I spoke to a few Aussie friends and they recommended me to go with Australian super. Apparently they have the best rates, but I don't plan on being here permanently. So in my mind, I'm like, I don't really care. In Australia, it is a legal requirement for your employer to pay 10% of whatever you earn into a superannuation for when you retire. If you're not planning on staying in Australia for a very long time, if you're only staying here for like a couple of years, you, when you leave Australia, you can actually apply to get whatever was paid into your super. You can take that home with you so you get a nice little check when you leave Australia. I think you can only apply once you've completely left Australia and you're not planning on returning. Oh my God, it's so cold. Oh. Another tip on making friends. Best way to make friends is staying in hostels. There are so many Facebook groups for Aus Australian backpackers. I'll link them down below. But I've actually made um, some friends through these groups, so they're highly useful. As someone that has traveled to over 40 countries, I was still a bit nervous to move to Australia. You don't know what to expect. It's literally the other side of the world. You're like, am I gonna make friends? I think I did this too, but a lot of people tend to post like, uh, you know, I'm from this country, I'm moving to Australia on a working holiday like this month anyone going to be around at the same time and generally loads of people comment it's a really supportive community of backpackers in australia so if you have any questions i'm sure people will answer them in there if not people have probably already answered those questions so yeah i will link those facebook groups down below so there are other ways to make friends going on walking tours joining some groups now because i've been to australia before i'm pretty familiar with the surroundings but that i know there's there's one that i've heard about a lot and has had good reviews i think it's called welcome to travel based in sydney and melbourne and it's like an introduction to living in australia it's like a week that you make friends that have your bank account things like that so there are tons of companies that that do things like that so you might want to consider doing that i think it's really easy as a british person to move to australia it's pretty seamless and i'll reassure you you will make friends trust me okay so if you're not planning on traveling and you're looking for somewhere to live using facebook groups um making friends in hostels where i found my first place to rent was in flatmates.com.au it's really laid back with renting here when i rented my first place in australia i was living in newtown in sydney and I was living with other backpackers in a big house share. I was paying like 270 a week, which is pretty cheap for Sydney. Um, so rent is pretty chill here. If you're not going through a, an estate agent, generally you have to pay a bond, which is two weeks rent up front. And then you pay like the week rent up front. It's really weird here. And I will say most people get paid fortnightly and you pay your rent fortnightly. That's something I found really strange because I'm from England. We get paid once a month and yeah, you pay rent once a month, but in Australia, 
it's like fortnightly, everything is fortnightly. There are other things you can do to get accommodation. It might be included in the work that you do, or I know some people do uh, work for accommodation in certain hostels, so that is something also to consider. So getting around, I think definitely the best way to get around Australia, um, just from personal experience, is by camper van. I recently did a camper van trip and it was just so good. Like Australia is really such a big country. If you're gonna be living in a city, there's no need to have a car, like public transport's pretty good here, unless you're going out of the city and it just takes ages to drive everywhere. Um, I've heard if you're going to buy a car, definitely get a mechanic or someone to come and check out the car with you. I think you pay them a small fee and then they just check the car over for you. Cars are expensive. I came here thinking I'm gonna buy a car, but I ended up moving to Sydney. I was like, I actually don't need a car. Flying is the other way to get around Australia if you're gonna be traveling. However, it is very expensive. So to get from like Sydney to Perth, return is like five hours one way. That flight alone is like five, six hundred dollars, which is to be expected, but I find these prices kind of crazy because I'm from Europe and yeah, we have cheap flights like Ryanair and EasyJet. I hope you found these tips helpful. These are just like basic life admin for moving to Australia on a working holiday visa. These are things that I didn't know about and I moved here and I just like had my first week of figuring all these things out and I wish I knew these things or at least did some more research before I came here because I was very uh, unprepared to move to Australia. Another thing I will mention, I came here thinking it's hot all year round, it's not. I have moved to Sydney and like the first two months it rained every day. Definitely bring like a light jacket or some jumpers because it can get quite cold here, especially in the winter. Like things will all work out eventually. As I said, I literally came here on a whim. It was totally sporadic and random that I came to Australia literally booked a flight to Sydney and then left two weeks later after finally getting my visa. Um, you'll make friends. If it doesn't work out in a city, you can move to somewhere else. The thing about Australia is it's such a big country. There's so many different areas to explore if you like being in the outback, in the cities, by the beaches. Australia has it all. And generally, although it's quite an expensive country to live in, it is got, you do have a really high quality of life here. The food is good. There's plenty of things to do. The weather is mostly good. Another tip. Remember, you are here on a working holiday visa. It is not permanent unless you're planning to get PR or anything down the line, but if you're just coming here to work for a year or two years, don't put any pressure on yourself to live your old life that you did back home. I came here like, right, I'm gonna get back into my gym routine, gonna get a really good job. And then I realized actually, I didn't like that lifestyle and it just stressed me out. So like, everyone here is just so much more laid back. I came to Australia to have fun, explore, work a little bit and make friends and I've been trying to mimic my old life. I did that for a couple of months and I realized that is not what I came here to do. So do not put pressure on yourself to live the same life that you lived back home because you're in Australia. You are here for like a year or two. Like it's not your forever life. So just have as much fun as you can. Don't put pressure on getting like an amazing job or earning loads of money because you'll just be wanting to earn money, travel, earn money, and then travel some more. And one thing I will say about the jobs as well, it's pretty normal to have like a hospitality job in Australia. I know back home, like people are very materialistic and they just want to have like the best job, the best car. People in Australia, from my personal experience, are very laid back. It's quite normal to work in a hospitality role or a coffee job. Like I'm going to be living in my best coffee shop lifestyle when I get a job in a coffee shop. For some reason, always just wanted to move to Australia and just work in a coffee shop. I'm only here temporarily. I might as well do that. If you are moving here on a working holiday visa as well, you will need to consider your options within the first few months. And I say this because you don't wanna to get too settled and then realize you wanna stay at second and third year, and then you're gonna to have to maybe move to a different area to go and complete your specific slash regional work. Another thing, there is not as many bugs here as you think. When I did my East Coast trip back a few years ago, I literally saw like one snake and one spider. Living in Sydney, the only thing I see is cockroaches and these crazy birds. One th oh my god, these funky little birds here as well. Okay, that kind of freaks me out. Uh, dude, that was so scary. Oh my god. Dude. Oh, that was so scary. I think that... Ah! This is scary. Fuck this. I literally did not plan this. I'm a bit scared of bed. That is why I'm reacting like this. I just want to finish my video, dudes. Jesus, they're so loud. This is literally ridiculous. I think we're good. 
Okay, this is another, just like a personal tip of moving to Australia. Definitely start in Sydney because it's actually such a beautiful city. Like, look at this. Final thoughts on moving to Australia, things you should know. Firstly, just do it because you will regret it if you don't. Like I literally had a thought a few years ago when I came to Australia, I was like, wow, I'd really like to come here. Work for a year. This isn't normal life. This is you living your best life in Australia. It's only temporary. And if you don't like it, you can always go home. Like you could always literally book your flight, go back to England or away from these birds. It's probably the best thing that I did. Like my situation, I was traveling at the time and I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm not ready to go back to England, but I've always wanted to go and work in Australia. It's only a year or two and you'll be surprised. You will have so much fun. I've only been here a few months. I've already had so much fun. There is so much to explore and see. As a European, just to live in a country like Australia where these beautiful beaches, it's hot, you know, these beautiful cities like Sydney, like literally looking at the Opera House right now, it's freaking ridiculous. And you just don't want to have that regret, you know, like in a few years time or when you pass the age of 30 and you can't do the working holiday visa, you don't want to be sat with that feeling of, I wish I did a year in Australia because no one likes to have regrets, guys. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Um, drop some comments down below. If you have any other questions, I will try and answer those. So leave the comments down below. If you're new around here, my name is Dane. I'm from England and I travel. Uh, I do things wrong. Weird things happen to me sometimes. Um, I attempt to record it all and put it on YouTube. So if you want to follow along, I would love for you to subscribe. I post weekly videos every Thursday, Friday. Lots of Australia content coming up. The next video you will see is the first video from the Queensland road trip, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna go. These birds are literally crazy, but thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, take care, subscribe, and peace out, and come to Australia. Ah.